Okay, hi guys. So, if you've been watching me all day, I've been cooking up a storm. I finished the lemon uh, fettuccine, made the dough, let it rest, used the KitchenAid to roll it out, and then I have a, a different pasta roller, um, in this case, to make the, the fettuccine. Earlier this week, I made a pappardelle noodle, so I just rolled that out with the KitchenAid and cut it out into the shapes because it was a broad noodle. With this, I felt like it needed to be a bit more precise because it's fun to do this. Um, so I'm going to start prepping the sauce, which I posted the recipe on the A ingredient, um, about three cloves of garlic, juice of two or three lemons. I might do a third lemon. I like uh, really lemony. I have some sun-dried tomatoes, which we're going to julienne, uh, red bell pepper, um, some chopped tomatoes or diced tomatoes. Um, I call for about a 14 ounce can or whatever the regular can size is. This is double that. So we'll use half of that Bit of tomato paste and... Um, we'll have some feta, which we'll toss in at the end, and then um, basil, which my basil plant's over in the window, so I'll do that at the end bit. But I wanted to show you guys uh, how to prep. Um, and if you do all this prep work, putting the recipe together um, at the end will be, or putting the food together at the end will be quite quick. So, and of course you can use box pasta, but I like to make fresh pasta. So, we're going to whack the garlic. Okay, get that all ready. Last bit. And mix this all together and mince it. So usually when I'm mincing, I'll kind of go through and make some slices, like so. Cut this little guy off the end here. So make some slices. Okay, then turn them the other way. Just kind of do a rough chop through this way. So now you have more of a dice. And then I'll scoot all these bits together and then take the knife through trying to get it more of a mince. I like kind of having chunks of garlic in my pasta, so it's kind of up to you how fine of a mince you want to do. Um, I think some people also like to use a garlic press. I never really have used one, um, but that would make this part easier as well, I'm sure. Scrape off the knife. thing that we're going to prep is the red bell pepper. So actually I'm going to cut off the top. technique on cooking shows as well. This is to just help you get some even or even slices if you cut off the top and the bottom. And take out all this white bit as well. So you're going to go through, make some strips. I believe on my recipe I say to chop this. If you want strips you can do that as well. So make the strips, those all together. to be perfect. We'll do the same here. Get them all 
together. I know normally on the cooking shows, they just like toss this away, but that's not real life. So slice them through this way. And they'll still more or less be uniform. You just want them to be more or less the same size so that they cook evenly in the sauce. Perfect. And this top bit, if you wanna utilize that, same thing, just try and get them into some slices. Nothing that's gonna go to waste. And then you can throw the rest in your compost. All right, again, line them up. All right, so our red bell pepper is done. Okay, next we'll do some sun-dried tomato. I'm gonna pull out, I don't know, four or five of these. I think you can actually buy these pre-julienned in some packaged items, but I grabbed what I could find at the store. So if you do have these, the whole sun-dried tomatoes, stack them up like so, like this, and then Again, I'm terrible at measuring. I think I put actual measurements on the recipe, but feel free to change it as you see fit. <laughs> okay, looks good. All right, we'll put this here. And then lastly, we'll just use our lemons. Oh, I brought the feta crumbles because later on we're gonna toss the feta into the sauce. And uh, whenever we're gonna toss the feta into the pasta once the sauce is done, and it'll make it nice and creamy and tart. If you buy the feta block, just kind of chop it up roughly so that it'll melt a little quicker later on. One. This is a little more than a fourth a cup. So we'll see if it ends up being enough. If what I tasted is not, we'll cut another lemon, we'll do a bit more. So that is all of our prep work done, really, except for the basil, which I'll do at the end. Um, with the basil, I can show you a quick test. Hold on. Just for later. Wait. So the easiest way to julienne herbs, I'm going to use the stems and everything, um, you're going to stack up the leaves so they're one on top of each other like this. It's the rolling technique. And then you roll it like so, beautiful, and then you cut against the bias. And then you have these lovely little ribbons. Like so. There you go. Now you have some julienne basil. All right. Uh, I'll do a second video when we actually start to put the sauce together. Yep. Yeah. All right, guys. So we're going to put the sauce together. Uh, you're going to put your fire in about medium heat. Add some olive oil into your pan. All right, so garlic can burn pretty easily if you aren't moving around, don't pay attention. So often when I'm sauteing garlic, I try to do it with something else to disperse the heat. So I'm gonna throw in the garlic and the red bell pepper at the same time to try and avoid that. I have uh, different flavors of olive oil. So I have this chili olive oil that I made. Um, which sometimes I'll use to saute the 
the sauce, the sauce, the veggies for the sauce, or lemon olive oil could be nice. In the pasta I made, I used the chili oil already, and I put um, some zest of lemon in the pasta itself, so I don't want to overdo it. So this is just regular extra virgin olive oil. All right, so I'll get all those bits in. Yeah, pasta. All right, so let this heat up. Let's get everything. Oop. Meanwhile, um, I used my hot water maker. There's a better word than that. Strong blank at the moment. Um, I did two rounds of water. The kettle I did two rounds of water to get the pasta water going because this will come through pretty quickly. It's really important to salt your pasta water. It should taste like the sea. Perfect. This is just kosher salt. So that'll be ready for us. And starting to hear a little bit of a sizzle here. See some action and start smelling the garlic. So we're just gonna let it start to saute. up the, tom the diced tomatoes. Um, I just got out what I needed. I'll freeze the rest for later. Um, the shrimp I thought earlier, they I bought them so they were already like deveined and without their shells and everything. I'm leaving the tails on because I like that. At this point, I'm going to grab the pepper. I'm not going to add too much salt to this actual dish because with the salted water and there's a bit of salt in the pasta and the feta, those are all layers of salt there. So once everything's mixed together, I'll kind of give everything a taste. And if it still needs a bit of salt, we can add it in. I'm always adding salt. You can't take it away. Just grinding a little black pepper. That's good. Throw that in. ready for us all right so just as the peppers kind of start to change color I'm gonna add in the sun-dried tomatoes This is not actually lavender or gray. So you'll see on the recipe, I call for a little bit of sugar. Anytime I'm using like canned tomatoes, I tend to add a bit of sugar. These tomatoes, are just to take out the kind of metallic tangy taste, these tomatoes are from a box actually. So I'm gonna taste the sauce, see if it has that sort of metallic taste. If it does, I'll add just a smidge of sugar. If it doesn't, we'll skip that ingredient. All right, this is sounding good. Next, I'm going to add a bit of tomato paste. What do you guys say about a tablespoon? All right, that's good. That alarm is the alarm for the bread. I just need to take the lid off the bread. So we're going to do two things at once. Good I'll turn this down low a little bit. So I'm also making bread. And for the last 15 minutes of the cooking, I'm supposed to take the lid off. So we'll see. 
I'm new to this whole bread making thing. It's equally parts, equal parts frustrating and awesome. So that's that. Okay. So keep an eye on whatever time it is now, Barry. Because in 15 minutes, the bread will be done. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna mix in this tomato paste. So I buy both cans of tomato paste and tubes of tomato paste. If I'm making a big, you know, pasta sauce, I'll use the can. Um, if I'm only needing a little bit, I like to use the tube so I don't have to worry about, you know, figuring out how to store it. If all you have is can, that's fine. Just like anything else, use what you need. You can freeze it for later. You can make little tomato paste, ice, ice cubes, pop them into things as you need them. All right, so that looks lovely. All right, now we're gonna add in the tomatoes. this cook for a few minutes and then I'll add in the lemon juice the shrimp so the last thing that we add to the sauce the water is ready to go And you let this cook. I'm just going to taste it a little bit, see if it needs a bit of sugar. Nope, I think it needs more lemon. All right. Grab it out this for future cocktail. So now at this point, I'm gonna do a couple things. I'm gonna toss the shrimp in. Oh, thank you, honey. I'm gonna toss the shrimp in. And then we're gonna also throw the pasta in the water because I'm gonna throw it all together in the end here. Okay, good. The course will turn pink once they're all, all said and done. Heat just a smidge. Okay, I'm gonna grab my pasta. Probably gonna do this in two batches. My little pasta baby. So fresh pasta cooks really quickly, a couple minutes. Check in over here. The shrimp 
So you'll see the pasta will start to float to the top as it as it cooks. I'm gonna pull the pasta from this pan, toss it in with the tomato sauce to kind of let it finish off in the sauce and take some of that pasta water with it because um, that'll help thin out the sauce a little bit. Oh yes, looking good. Another minute. taste test. Yep, that's tasty. All right, that's al dente. Or maybe a little, you know, 30 seconds from al dente, <laughs> which is perfect. Because it'll cook a little bit more in here. Grab some of that pasta water. Leave that one there. I'll catch them later. Beautiful. Let me just see how this looks. Okay. Oh yeah, I can taste the lemon in that pasta. It's good. Come on, fella. All right, let's mix this in first. Let's see how much more pasta we actually need. Because we can always save that pasta for a future dish. can see that the shrimp are starting to get pink. Yeah, we can use a little bit more pasta in there. So grab another handful. I'll eat this. Let's eat breakfast pasta tomorrow. <laughs> okay, toss this in. Let that start to cook off. Now, I do want a bit more pasta water than I was able to just gather. So I'm just gonna steal some. You remember again, this water is salted, so. They're good. Beautiful. All right. Turn down the heat just a little bit as we wait for the rest of our pasta to come up. And then the last step will be to throw in the feta and the julienne basil. Then we'll do a last taste, make sure all the seasoning's good, and then it'll be time to eat. If you guys have any questions, post them. I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability. Oh, if you want, you can also, you know, top with a bit of Parmesan if you like. Um, I think the feta is more than enough cheese, but far be it from me. Not gonna judge either way. This is coming up. I think we're ready for our last round of pasta. Oh yeah, it's bubbling away. Grab this guy. Beautiful. Actually turning off the fire now. Come with me. So the pasta that I didn't cook, I'm just gonna put in, you know, Ziploc or Tupperware. And I'll maybe be sure to cook it in the next couple of days. Perfect. Turn this off. So there we go. Good. Mix that in. Um, when I walked my friend Elizabeth through making this recipe earlier this week, I think it was on Monday, she wanted to chop up the shrimp so that she would get a little bit of a shrimp bit in every bite. So, you do you. <laughs> All right, perfect. Good, good, good. All right, that looks awesome. Now let me grab the feta. All right, feta crumbles. 
I'll add in half now. Get that mixed up in there. Barry is stealing cheese. He thinks I can't see him. I have eyes all in my head. Everywhere, Barry. Everywhere. I see you. <laughs> all right. And then you can see the feta also helps to thicken up the sauce a little bit. Okay, we grab the other batch. Oh yeah, oh man, yeah. yeah. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> okay. You know what, I'm just gonna grab this fella and put him in my mouth. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm, good stuff. Beautiful. Okay, so now before I add the basil, I'm gonna do a little sauce taste, to make it a mess. Let me grab a thank you. Oh yeah, give me some a little bit of everything. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's tasty. I might add a little bit more chili, but that's a surprise to no one. <laughs> um, a little red, like red pepper flake, I think would be nice. Um, it, yeah, it was good. That's it. I'm done. So you're gonna chop with your basil, um, maybe right before serving. I need to julienne a bit more, but I already showed y'all how to do that. So, you know, do the rest of your basil, top it, eat it, put some parm if you want, toast some bread if you made it. That's it. Happy Saturday. We have a cocktail for you later.